Yeah, I can see that perfectly. Take it away. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Fran McKegney. I'm head of digital learning at Hibernia College. And I'm joined by two of my colleagues here, Lavro Boliat, who is the uh, UX designer on this project, and Justin Staunton, who is our learning technologist and all-around Moodle wizard. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, project that involved the redevelopment of a Moodle VLE, putting design thinking and user-centered design at the heart of the at the heart of the process. A quick bit about Hibernia College for those of you who don't know us, we're a Dublin-based blended learning college. Our focus is teacher training. Uh, we have about two and a half thousand students. They are postgraduate uh, students taking their professional masters in education. We're the biggest provider of teachers into the Irish education system. And we're now starting to branch out into both undergraduate programs and beyond and beyond education. Um, about 18 months ago, we initiated a project which internally is known as the Digital Architecture Project, in which we started to look ahead and say, what will teaching and learning look like in a Bernier College over the next five to 10 years? Um, and from our perspective, the attendant question that went along with that was, you know, and what digital architecture will, we, will be needed to support whatever vision emerges of teaching and learning over the next, uh, over the next period of time? So we spent some time talking to the various departments in the college from the academic teams to IT to VLE support, uh, executive management team and so on. It came up with a structure of six workshops that would explore different themes. And out of that, we would issue a report and then take the, take the, the journey on from there. Um, you can see the themes that we had, you know, first one role of mobile technologies in a Bernie College's future, student identity and student journey, using digital technology to strengthen community and learning in the regional groups. Again, we're a blended college. Uh, our traditional model is 50% online, 50% classroom or face-to-face. -face. So we have students all over the country and we group them in different ways by regions, by subjects um, and, and so on. But obviously building community and strengthening communities is a, is a huge theme for us. Uh, collaborative learning and research was workshop four. And then obviously the future of the VLE uh, got, its own dedicated, uh, got its own dedicated space. So this project came out of that work we did the six workshops, uh, we issued a report, we then did a couple of follow on more detailed workshops. And out of that, really, we got a mandate to build a new platform. Um, it's a rare privilege to have the opportunity to build something from scratch. Um, so, you know, tremendous opportunity for us on the one hand. It also comes with a daunting caveat, which is since we are a digital college, it can't fall over. Um, so it has to work or we're out or we're out of business. Um, so for the past 16 months or so, we've we've been working away on, on this. Now, there are two other components to the overall architecture that we won't get into today. We have a Hibernia College home and then we have we also launched a collaboration uh, app for staff and students at the same time, but we'll obviously focus here on the, on the Moodle redevelopment. As the person had the overall responsibility, I suppose my biggest worry was, how would we not get lost as we went through the development process? As you know, um, over, the, over a 16 month period, you take hundreds of decisions at different levels, everything from you know, features to UI elements, technical, decisions, workabouts, and so on. And with the best intention of the world, you can get driven off course over the course of a, over a course of a long project. And two images came to my mind when I was thinking about this. The first one was a, an airline or a, an aircraft flying on a, on a long distance flight, say from San Francisco to Dublin. How does it find its way and land in Dublin rather than London or Budapest or somewhere else? And so obviously this uh, radio beacons flying beacon to beacon is, is a key component of, of that journey. And I was wondering well, what are our beacons and how do we know we're on track at the various times and keep ourselves, keep ourselves on route. The second image uh, was Howl's Moving Castle that came to mind. Now, Howl's Moving Castle is one of my favorite movies. Um, the castle itself is an incredible invention. Uh, for those who haven't seen the movie, it has feet. It can walk over mountains. It also can fly. It has lots of capabilities inside it, amazing entrances and exits uh, to it. Um, but, you know, if you were to look at it as a UI, it, you would probably describe it as somewhat idiosyncratic. Uh, Howell knows 
where everything is, but it's probably for an external user quite difficult to find out where everything goes and how you know how things work in there. So we know over the course of projects we get additional requests. Can we have one of these? Can we have one of those? How about this? What about that? And you know, not just bolting them on, but including them into the into the overall flow of the of the project was 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 key for us. Um, my experience over twenty five years is the safest area of focus is to just really focus in on the users. Who are the users? on the system, what are they trying to do? What do we physically ask them to do to achieve uh, their goals and so on? And at all times through the project to, to have this relentless focus on the, uh, on the user experience. And so we decided to sort of embed formally design thinking, user design, user-centered design into the development process, which was not in the college's tradition up to that. So this it was a new step or a new part of the process. So we went on the hunt, found Lavro, added him into the team and formalized uh, the process. Now, I, I'm not gonna say much about the process itself. I'm gonna leave that to Lavro. When we get there, I do wanna say two quick things before I hand over to Lavro. And one is, of course, you, know, you all know there are many users on a system and it's really, particularly from a, from a team lead perspective, it's really worthwhile spending time thinking about the users, the relationships between the users and actually, clearly identifying a hierarchy of users in, in the project. And there's two reasons to do this, I think. One is it, it really clarifies things for the team uh, and helps you know define the lines of attack and how you're going to go after this. The second thing is it does it provides protection to the team as well. So I was fortunate enough to be on the uh, executive management team in Hibernia College. So once we had decided on the approach, I could take it to the leadership group, get their buy-in uh, at that level, which would include the heads of the various departments. And that gave space and coverage to the team to get on with the work in terms of the priorities that we had identified and the sequence in which we were going to, uh, we were going to go after it. Um, obviously, we put the students as the number one priority um, and everybody else was came after that, you know, program and men's IT and so on came came after that VLE support administrators came after that. Um, and Lover is going to talk to the student journey and the student experience now in, in, in a moment. Last thing before I hand over to Lavro, just want to say that we're, you know, there were other prerequisites that, you know, had to be built into this project. One of the things that we really wanted to do was to spend time looking at the architecture of the platform itself. In particular, we wanted to separate out the business rules, the business behaviors, the programmatic behaviors from the presentation layer at the top. And we want to do this for a couple of reasons, <clears throat> mostly to do with control so that we could continue to refine and iterate being in full control of the, uh, of the, uh, of the presentation layer, we, something we didn't have with the previous version of our, of our VLE. And a shout out to our development partner, Innovation, in relation to that, we, Innovation, who are one of the sponsors of this conference, worked with us on this and understood what we were trying to achieve and did a great job. And so I want to give a public thanks to Mark and his team for the support they gave us through, uh, through this. Secondly, mobile enablement. As you can see, this is part of a broader initiative in the college and the role of mobile technologies has gone from being very little, I would say in the past, to now being an integral part of how we think about everything moving forward. Um, so enablement may actually not be strong enough. Um, mobile technologies are first among equals. Uh, so you can't design for a laptop and then as an afterthought uh, in include uh, mobile. Um, there are capabilities, mobile capabilities that that you know, laptops and so on don't have that are very useful in an educational setting. So to think of it as an equal client uh, was really important. Uh, was really important to us. So having said that, I'm going to pass over to Lavro to answer the question: What did we actually do? Um, so Lavro, I'm going to stop sharing and let you take it up from here. All right. Thanks, Prime. Uh, can you just share my screen, please? Uh, I hope you can see this. Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, as Fran mentioned, I was brought in as a UX UI designer. And so my job was kind of to evaluate the situation of the old MyHelm system and see what can be improved and obviously made better. Now, just to briefly touch upon this, like uh, we designers usually try to have some kind of a framework to work with. 
So uh, I use the usual design thinking and user set and design, which just you know, briefly for people who might not be familiar with these frameworks, design thinking is a methodology framework which kind of sets you on a correct path, makes sure that you you know design correctly and for the actual problems. It's usually represented with with a double diamond model, which actually you know has four distinct phases which are research, analyze, and then ideate and test and prototype. So the kind of the idea is that you first, you know, you start with a problem and then you have to research it. There's a phase of divergent thinking where you, you know, expand your ideas and then you analyze things, you narrow them down and then you define the problem. And then in the other diamond phase, you first ideate, brainstorm, you know, come up with a lot of solutions, possible ideas, which is once again, divergent thinking. And then you, once again, you converge things with testing and prototyping oh, until you get a final solution that works. And now uh, I kind of have my own variation where I have things in three phases. If it's, this not, it's just once again, you know, research and analyze because I have a feeling that here you still have a bunch of unanswered questions, then you ideate this kind of this very chaotic and creative process. And then once again, you boil things down to a single solution. Now, this is not so important for you, but uh, my slides are gonna represent that here. So this is kind of the first phase, research and analyze. Okay, so one, as always, you know, the first thing is one of the advantages for me as a UX designer is whenever I come into an organization, I'm essentially a new user. So I can explore the old system. And so the first thing that I did was so-called heuristic analysis, which stands for like a discovery analysis where you just, or some people like to call it an expert analysis. So uh, my first task was to, you know, explore the old system, all my homes and see what's wrong, you know, some intuition and experience that I have with other platforms. Uh, and now I can briefly show you now, this is the old system. What did it look like? And I mean, on the first, in the first status, it's kind of clear that it's an outdated design. Uh, there's a lot of options, so things can get confusing and out of hand. Now, granted, this was built in Drupal, but still, I mean, for a new user, a student who comes here, it can be very confusing. And then you click on study now, and this is where you actually enter the model. And I mean, so from a design user experience point of view, it's once again kind of hard to find your way around. There are these courses here. You don't know what to do. Ugh, the menu is still the old menu. It's study tools, a lot of options. So in the end, I kind of bought things. I think these are our main problems. So it's a complex system. There's a lot of things you can do. Like one of the major ones is no visibility of system status and no breadcrumbs, or at least breadcrumbs that work correctly. So if you go into a course, it's uh, this kind of changed. You can't even click on this. Where am I? No visibility of the system status, as I said. So you don't know where you are actually. If you want to go back, you have to click home. Once again, study now. The whole journey begins again. And that's kind of hard. And so one final thing, a big one was there's, it's not a, there is not a match between the real world, so the academic program that the students are enrolled in and the design model of this system. So what I mean by that is this is kind of a small graphic. I hope you can see it. So this is, this represent, oops, sorry, represents the academic program. So here, you know, when you enrolled in the college, the program consists of a lot of modules so there is a bunch of them. Then modules contain courses, courses contain sessions, and sessions in the end have activities. Now that kind of exists in Moodle, but it's not represented like that. I don't, I don't know where my modules are. You know, I, I can go try to find courses. If I need to take an assessment, something that's for a specific module, I have to go to home, assessments, and then I have to find my module. So these are the modules and take an assessment. So it's everything, it's mostly a problem of a bad information architecture. But you know, to validate my findings, I did a couple of other things. So one of the main, main things is the user interviews or observations. 
obviously when we talk about user-centered design, this is the, the main thing that we have to do. So uh, basically I talked to 10 of our students on Zoom. The pandemic already started, so that's kind of a must. So I just, you know, I gave them a series of tasks and asked them to perform them. You know, just like, ah, it's a regular Monday. What's the first thing that you do when you log in to my homes? They share their screens, obviously. And so I just analyzed, you know, I wanted to see what they do, how they perform things. And I also gave them some specific tasks, like go into a certain course, activity, try to do something, then, you know, give them something like, kind of difficult to find. Aha, how would you know, like, what's happening next in your program and things like that. So, you know, a lot of going across the whole system just to see how they can get their way around. And the, one other thing that was kind of useful was using the Matomo Analytics, which is a system similar to Google Analytics, uh, which we had in place for this platform, uh, which actually this kind of just validated things that I learned from users. So I found out about the most common places where users go to and where they spend the most time in the platform. So that's kind of cool. And then just to have a shared understanding with my teammates and colleagues, I made this mental model, which is a common artifact in UX design, where I just wanted to represent uh -huh, and my findings. So our user mo usually spends most time in these three areas. So studying, learning, calendar, obviously to see what's happening next, and then assessments and gradebook. And some minor things were, you know, school placement, especially during that time of year, library, especially when they were writing their research dissertation, and programming info just to see what's happening in the timeline and things like that. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of model for all of us to be on the same page, what's, what's important for students and what they really need. Uh, okay, and then I also have this artifact called user journey flows, which represents uh, just how hard it is for users to get to a certain you know point in the system. So this is one of the screenshots. So the yellow, oh, sorry, the green line represents a correct path. So from the home page, if they wanted to get to the activity, so this is what they should have done. But you know, it's obviously this kind of represents that it's a long journey with a lot of steps to get there. And another thing that is kind of interesting is that not only it's, it's a long journey, there are a lot of confusing nodes where you can you know, get off track. So if you're in the home, you can click on study now, then you don't know where to go. You can go to other pages, then you have to go back. And so in the end, this is what we have, a long journey that is both confusing and yeah, long for people. So we just uh, wanted to simplify things. That's kind of our most important, you know, guideline here, Simpl simplify and shorten the user flow with less room for mistakes. So kind of this was the ideal thing that we wanted, wanted users to be able to perform in just a few steps to get to the activity. Okay, and now we are kind of in the ideation phase, a lot of brainstorming and thinking about things. And here I came back to the information architecture where one of the more important things was to build a match between the real world and our platform. And this, I refer back to the academic structure. So program has modules, course, modules have courses, and then you have sessions and these have activities. So one of the artifacts was the sitemap here, uh, which is not so important. Uh, and here, thankfully, we had Justin Staunton, our Moodle expert, who stumbled upon the Moodle move theme. And we kind of examined a lot of themes and things we could do. And this theme perfectly fit, fit our, uh, our needs because it's mostly because of the left-hand side menu, which as I'm gonna show now, uh, we actually used it to map all of the most important things you know, that students, students need. We map them to the menu. So, you know, study, learn path, it's gonna be here in the main thing, calendar as well, gradebook and so on. So that was kind of neat. And then we went on to playing with wireframes, testing things. So this is just a small screenshot of a very chaotic <laughs> Figma file that I have. Uh, 
Okay, so now just a couple of interesting things. I can maybe show you the new platform that we have. It looks like this. This so this is the new my homes. Uh, yes. So the first thing that's interesting from a Moodle perspective is we added this study now or homepage, which actually you know this is the first point that actually matches the real world and the platform model. So we are now on this level. This is kind of your program. So this contains the list, list of all of your academic modules. So orientation, foundations of education. So now it's kind of matches the information architecture of the real world, which is cool. And here on top, you have recently accessed courses, which is a standard model thing, which is obviously quite useful. So we, we have three of those here. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then when you click on one of the modules, you get into the so-called module hub. So this is also kind of new in the Moodle world. Uh, so let's say, you know, I have to, I go to foundations of education. So you have all of your courses here, you know, neatly in cards with pretty pictures. And on top you have the core activities as we call them. Now this is, so we, as I showed previously in the old system, you know, everything that's concerning one single module was scattered across the whole system. As I said, assessments, you have to go here, school placement hub and things like that. But now everything for the module foundations of education is inside here. So you have module info with you know, some information and breadcrumbs work. So I can go back this way. Live events, assessments, you, know, you can access everything here. And it's nice and logical, which is cool. All right, so this is a big one for us. Uh, we believe, you know, this simplifies things a lot. And the next, uh, so we have course and session pages. An interesting thing that we did here, we put sessions, you know, immediately visible and we aligned them, you know, made them here like in tabs, which kind of represents progress and the timeline. So this is session one, which one is, which is usually, you know, visible when, whenever you come here. Session two, session three, so, you know, it kind of showcases the timeline. Uh, okay, and so another kind of interesting thing, thing with, that we did, we always, you know, wanted to ask what the users really want or need. So in Moodle, there were a lot of icons which represent different activities. And, you know, when you talk to students, they don't really care if something is a database, you know, is it a file or a book or a page, so we kind of wanted to narrow these down, simplify things once again. So we made, as you can see, you know, some of these repeat themselves, uh, which is represented here better. So we kind of grouped them. So all of the interactive activities get a blue icon. These are some kind of like retrieving information, supporting icons still, you know, color coded for easier, you know, you can see things at a glance. And it's represented here on this page or in the live system. You know, here, these are the activities. Okay, and one other thing, we designed a cleaner style for the calendar, which, you know, in the old system, sorry, it is kind of unnecessarily full of bright colors. If I find it, I can show it to you, you know, like this. I mean, the calendar works great in Moodle, but yeah, we just want to make it nicer and cleaner. And then obviously we, this is just to show, you know, we played a lot of colors. We wanted to stay on brand with, you know, the user interface. This is just to showcase that we did a lot of research. Then we obviously tested things with two prototypes in Figma. Then we the skinned mockups. And then we tested the developed site for months. So in the end, we have this, you know, we kind of hope we did talk to our users. They find the new thing much more usable. And it's a new user experience. You know, it works on, it's responsive. It works on a lot of devices. Uh, so yeah, that's that's it for me. I hope like this and thanks. Um, so for the Q&A, we have Justin Staunton. Maybe he's the best person because he's a Google expert, as we said. So maybe we can direct all the questions to Justin. Mm -hmm. all right, thanks. Thanks, Laura. Thank you so much. Thank you to your team for coming along and presenting today. Sure. Thank you. Um, there's one question here from Hugo. He asks, how big is your team between instructional designers, developers, UX, et cetera? 
So the, um, the digital design team is 17 people, um, but not all, not everybody was involved in this project because we do have a content development group uh, that were not involved in that. We also worked with innovation. We think we had uh, between this and the other aspects of the of the project that we did, we, we probably had four uh, four people work with us in in, in innovation. So um, and then we're obviously we have a dedicated IT team and we have a dedicated VLE support team. So they also participated in the project. So it was a big group. Um, it was a big group. Yeah, I'd imagine. Um, there is another question here. What accessibility testing did you do using the same icon for different functional things? Yeah, so accessibility is a great is a great question. We, you know, I, I except so we we consulted on accessibility at the beginning and made some decisions on it. And uh, so we've done preliminary accessibility work. I would say we were mindful of accessibility the whole way through the project, but we, we just did preliminary work on it. However, um, accessibility is a big project for us this year. And uh, the focus on, on that, you know, including on the mobile, because we now have much broader support for mobile devices as well. So accessibility is a huge theme for us this year. We were mindful of it as we built the project, but yeah, we haven't enough work done on it at this stage. Just um, Greg, sorry, did I interrupt? No, it's just one of the questions there, Renee. Um... Are these improvements part of the custom team theme? Um, <clears throat> funnily enough, we actually the team was very light that we customized. What we actually got innovations to, or what they chose to do, was uh, customize the um, the course format. So we have two parts of it that are customized. So it sits under the umbrella of academic programs, but outside of that, it still acts like the move team that's off the shelf. <clears throat> So the custom formats was, one was the module hub, which is the six boxes that sit across the top. So that's the Hibernian module hub that we customize. And then we have each one of the tiles down below. That's the Hibernia course format. Okay, so we had the two different types of um, course formats customized. We didn't really touch the overall team. So anything outside of the academic program, it still acts like the move team. Uh, yeah, the icons, um, <clears throat> Lavro redesigned a full set. So for PDFs, Excel, um, Word documents, we just replaced it with a, um, a scalable, uh, an SVG, wasn't it, Lavro? A scalable vector uh, graphic. So we replaced anywhere that it would show a PDF icon, an Excel icon with the single uh, file icon. So it was easy enough to do. Um, I think and we, we want, yeah, we want to do this as well because we have a collaboration platform. So students now have a, have a mobile based uh, collaboration platform and we, we sync the Moodle calendar events over to the collaboration platform. And so we actually have different, we wanted the icons to, to carry over to the mobile apps. Um, they're larger actually on the phone. So again, we had icon set in different sizes with slightly more detail, but clearly related, clearly related to each other. Um, just one, one, one question there. Uh, how did academics and staff feel about the, these UI improvements? They were very surprised, very shocked, and actually delighted. But one of the big things I've been working on at the moment was because the grade book was separated out into each one of the module hubs, um, I've been working with a plugin um, called My Feedback. And it's a really nice plugin. But what it does is it allows the um, assessments team or academic team to view an individual's full, um, how would you say, assessment portfolio over the, the entire program. So it's not just giving you a snapshot of each individual module, but you can filter it out. So um, that was that's one of the big things I'm working on at the moment. Hopefully roll that out in the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so it's still, we're still building, still building. And Rennie, I know our time is up, but I, actually I think the question about the academic team is a really good one. We really went out of our way to work closely with the academic teams the whole way through this process um, so that again they were you know they were involved and they knew what was coming and so on but as as Justin said they were surprised at essentially how we simplified the system. 
Okay, back Thanks, to you, Renee. Uh, thank you so much. There's another question there from Carol. I think Lavro is going to answer that. You can answer that in the chat as well. We won't um, make it disappear. So Carol, yeah, sure. they should answer your um, question there. But thank you so much. That's some fantastic work you're doing. And thank you for sharing. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Cheers.